Ciao, I'm Mariana Esposito. Today on Ciao Italia, two fantastic and traditional dishes from Basilicata. Ciao, I'm Mariana Esposito. Welcome to Italy, and let's cook real Italian. Aren't they gorgeous? Swiss chard. I knew you said that. I'm in heaven. Think about how healthy this is. That's for you. Sunday sauce. All 20 regions of Italy are fabulous. And every time I do this, I think of my Nonna Galasso because she always made it this way. You want a Goldilocks dough, just right. Who doesn't like basil, especially in the summer? Obviously, you have to have pesto sauce at some point, right? I mean, I'm a cook. Why can't I try it? You're the best. No, you're the best. <laughs> It's almost as tall as I am. This is something called candele, candele pasta. And you probably never had anything this large before, and we're not gonna cook it like this, but I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with it later on. But first, I wanna tell you where this comes from. So you look right here at the region of Basilicata in the south, big pasta area. And we're talking about pasta that's made with water and semolina not with eggs, so this is a dried pasta. So we're gonna do a candele pasta with melanzane, eggplant, and tomatoes. First, we're gonna make the sauce, and when you're doing, dealing with pasta and sauces, you should always make the sauce first and cook the pasta last. So I'm gonna set that aside for later on and show you how we're gonna cook that. So let's talk about the sauce. So we're gonna start with some eggplant. And in Italian, that's known as melanzane, which means mad apple, by the way, because at one time, this was considered to be a kind of a uh, mysterious fruit. Eggplant is a fruit, it's not a vegetable. And it was brought to India, uh, to Italy by India, and the Italians embraced it. And ever since, it's been in Southern Italian cooking as one of the premier vegetables used in the South. And the reason that it's so popular in the South is because you need a really hot climate to grow eggplant. This is a hot summer uh, crop. So lots of eggplant dishes in the South. So all I'm doing is cutting up the eggplant into manageable pieces. And I know that a lot of people like to salt their eggplant and allow the bitter juices to drain out. But I'll tell you a little secret. If you're starting with small eggplant like these are, they have very few seeds, and the seeds are where all that bitterness lies. So if you start with small eggplant, you can avoid having to do that whole salting situation. So I'm lazy and I've opted for small eggplant, but if you want to use large, you're going to have to salt them put them in a colander, let them sit with a weight on top of them, and let them drain out those juices, and then you're gonna have to rinse them off, dry them, and then you can make the dish. But forget all that. So let's put our eggplant into a bowl. And then we need tomatoes. And I wanna talk to you a little bit about the type of tomato that we're using for this dish. So eggplant, a southern Italian vegetable. There it is. Now, for the tomatoes for this, we're using something called San Marzano. San Marzano is a plum tomato. And if it's a San Marzano tomato, it can only come from one place. San Marzano in southern Italy, around Naples, Mount Vesuvius. The soil there is very, very fertile. And it allows for the production of these tomatoes, which are very sweet, they don't have a lot of acidity, they're very pulpy, and this is the type of tomato that you wanna make when you're, uh, use when you're making a sauce. You couldn't use a beefsteak for this because a beefsteak tomato is really a salad tomato and it's too watery. So plum tomatoes. Now when you buy them, you've gotta be like Sherlock Holmes because there are a lot of plum tomatoes out there all calling themselves 
San Martano. But what I want you to do is look on the bottom of this can. You see here? All you have to remember are these three letters. D-O-P. Denominazione di origine protetta. Which means that these tomatoes are guaranteed to have come from San Marzano. There are lots of other kinds of tomatoes grown in Italy. They're plum tomatoes, but they're not San Marzano. End of story. If it doesn't say DOP, it's not a San Marzano. And the other thing that you want to look for is this European Union label right here that guarantees that, that these tomatoes were grown in a specific area with a particular cultivar of the San Marzano type tomato. And when you buy them and you open the can, they should be whole, like this. San Marzano's never are diced. So if you see it says San Marzano diced tomato, don't buy that because that is not a true San Marzano. Okay, now that you know all that about the San Marzano, we're gonna put them in a bowl. There they are, beautiful dark red. Okay, and I never waste that either. I'll add a little bit of water later on when I'm making the sauce. So now we want to get our pan going with a little bit of olive oil. I'm going to turn up the heat here a little bit and put up oh, a couple tablespoons of olive oil in the pan. You may need more as you go on because, you know, eggplant is so notorious about absorbing oil. So you put the oil in and we want to add some onion. So a diced onion, I've got more onion here than I need. Get an onion in there. And we're gonna get that going until it gets fragrant. And with it, we're going to have, of course, some garlic. So when you buy garlic, look, this is a really tight bulb. You wanna make sure that the paper around it is secure. There's no open spaces, it doesn't look like it's withering, it's hard. That tells you that that's a really good uh, knob of, or a bulb of garlic. We're gonna give that a little smash. So mince up the garlic. And here's a little trick. If you want that garlic to be really creamy, you can always add just a few grains of salt to it before you're going to mince it finely. You put, put a few grains of salt over it and you just go away for a few minutes, have a cup of coffee or something. You come back and you'll find that the garlic is a lot creamier and it's a lot easier to deal with. So remember that trick the next time you're cooking with garlic. I'm just gonna speed this up a little bit because we wanna get the other ingredients into our pan. All right, so there's our garlic. And we're gonna add that now because the onions are starting to take on a little color. So that goes in, I'm going to turn this down a little bit and give that a stir. Starting to smell good. Now we need anchovy. Southern Italian cooking, you got to use anchovies. And we're using anchovies in oil. Let me get a fork. So here they are, beautiful. Look at those, gorgeous. I'm going to put them right on this board. There are about four in this can. That's about the amount that I need. So I'm going to take them all and just dice them up. And they're going to dissolve right into this onion and garlic mixture. So they go in. And then with that, let me stir that around a little bit. Anchovy really is something that gives your sauce the depth of flavor that it really, really needs. I sneak it into tomato sauce all the time. People never know, those that don't like anchovy. Then we want some olives. Here we have some green olives. All we did was take the pit out of them. You can buy green olives in your grocery store. These are Cerniola olives, the green olives from southern Italy. So. Whatever kind of olive you want to use is fine, but these are the green olives from southern Italy, and you want to give them a coarse chop. And now you're starting to see that this is, this is going to take on really interesting layers of flavor. So get those 
diced. And let me see how we're doing here before we go any further. I'm going to turn the heat up now. And I am going to add tomato paste. Yes, about a couple tablespoons. And I'm just going to eyeball that. That's one, and that's two. Make sure you're buying a good tomato paste, one that's imported from Italy, because there are a lot of imitation tomato pastes out there. And the tomato paste really coats the onion, the garlic, the anchovy. I wish you could be here to smell this. So you really want to coat those ingredients well with the anchovy and the tomato paste. Beautiful. Okay, now back to these olives. So this is going to give a little bit of a bite to this dish as well. If you don't like olives, you can keep this out. I want to make sure that those are nicely diced. Okay, we're going to leave those there for a minute now because now we are going to add that eggplant. This is about a pound of eggplant. I like to use sometimes those Japanese eggplants, you know, the real long, thin ones. They're good too. So we get this in, and this is where you may need to add a little bit more oil. So try to coat all of this eggplant well with uh, your mixture here. This sauce, when it's all together, is going to take about 20 minutes or so to cook. I'm going to turn the heat up just a bit here and give this more olive oil. Actually, you know what? This is good too. The oil from the anchovies. We don't want to waste anything. And we'll give it a little bit of olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. Okay. And now we've got a little bit of a sizzle going on here. This is a really, considered a really country dish because of all of these ingredients are so readily available in the South. Okay, that's looking good. Now we can put in the olives, all of them. They go in. Stir that around a little bit. Mm -mm -mm. And we're going to add now our capers. Capers. You can either get the ones in salt, which you will have to rinse off, or you can get the ones in brine. If you get the ones in brine, you just have to drain them. The ones in salt, you have to rinse off. So these are like the seed pod of the nasturtium plant, and they grow everywhere in the cracks and walls of different towns in southern Italy. So obviously, you use that in your cooking too. So the capers have kind of like a, you know, a little spritey flavor to them. All right, now we get to the tomatoes. So let me put this aside. And here they are. So here we have those beautiful San Marzano tomatoes. And you see the skin is off of them. They never come with the skin on. They're always peeled and they're always whole. So at this point, you really got to get into this. So get your old clothes on because this is the way my grandmother and probably a lot of your grandmothers or aunts would add plum tomatoes when they were making a sauce with your hands. So you take the plum tomatoes and you squeeze them by hand right over your vegetables. Just like that. Squeeze them. See? And they're very, very pulpy. Very few seeds. And I remember when we were in southern Italy, around Naples, one year when we were filming Ciao Italia, we actually went to a factory where they were canning plum tomatoes. Canning plum tomatoes, they were plum tomatoes from around Naples, around Mount Vesuvius. And like I told you, that, that kind of a climate with the Mount Vesuvius looming in the background and with all that volcanic ash and the hot climate, it's just the perfect condition for these 
tomatoes to grow. Okay, so there's the rest of the puree. That goes on. I get rid of this. Wash my hands. And remember that can? Got to add that with a little bit of water, or you could do wine if you wanted to. Put that in. Give this a good stir. And you're going to let this cook over medium low heat until this eggplant has cooked down. Your kitchen is smelling beautiful. And then you can go on to making your pasta because then the sauce will be all ready for you. So we want to put a cover on this now. We want to make sure that that's well combined. Looks beautiful. On to pasta. Here's that pasta again that we're going to use with the eggplant sauce, the candele pasta. Now it's called that. Candele means candle. And you can, and you know, they used to carry these in a procession, you know, the long tapers. So you can just understand why they gave it this name. The other interesting thing about this pasta is the roughness of it. It's not smooth. You know what that means? This pasta has been put through a bronze dye, and it gives it that rough edge. And that rough edge is what holds that sauce on the pasta. You won't find that with really cheap kind of pasta because they're not extruded through bronze dyes. So this has got a very rough feel to it. So how do we cook this? Obviously not like this because, you know, you may have a boca grande, a big mouth, but this is really too big. So we want to break this up into pieces. And this is very rare to do in Italian cooking because you never would like cut spaghetti or anything like that. But this is an exception. This candele pasta. So you break it up into about two inch pieces. So let me do one more. Just break it. Try not to hit anybody with it because little pieces could go flying. So we're going to cook this until it's al dente. Ugh, there. Now, you're saying, where am I going to find this? Well, you probably could find it online or in an Italian specialty store. You can always find a smaller version of it. Now, this is something called zitoni, which means big ziti. And obviously, this would be a lot easier to break, you see. Ah, simple. But I like that fat one. And it also has that rough cut to it so that you know that it has been extruded through a bronze dot. Or you can just go out and get yourself a really good imported rigatoni. Who will know? Okay, now that we have that, let's get that water boiling. pasta is drained and ready. I took out a little bit of the water. I'm going to put the pasta right there. And you want to make sure that you cook pasta al dente. And for a shaped pasta like this, you'll know because you see how this pasta has kept its shape? It's not flat. Flat pasta means overcooked pasta. So now we can add the sauce. I'm going to add a little bit of the water from cooking the pasta because that has starch in it and that's going to help bind this sauce to the pasta. And then we want to give this just a tad of salt and a grinding of pepper. And of course, since I'm the cook, I get to taste. So let me mix that a little bit. And you see how nice this eggplant has cooked right down. Nice thick sauce. Perfect, no more salt. Okay, so now we're gonna add some of this. This is about a half a pound of the candele pasta. So we're not gonna use all this sauce. You can save it for another, another batch of pasta. And we're going to toss this just to coat the pasta. Look how beautiful this is. Candele pasta, beautiful. I wish you could be here to smell this. It smells absolutely delicious. 
And oh, one other thing. Italians never really oversauce the pasta. They just lightly coat it. So give it a couple good, good tosses to really coat that pasta. And then the only other thing this needs is some Pecorino Romano cheese. Remember, I've told you about Pecorino Romano before, and you want to put that right over the top, this wonderful sheep's milk cheese. That's ready. How about we make patate e crocchi? To make patate e cruschi from basilicata, which is a nice potato and sweet dried pepper dish, you need to heat up some olive oil in a pan and add a clove of garlic just to flavor the oil. When the garlic starts to turn a little bit golden, take it out. Put sliced cooked potatoes in the pan and cook them in the olive oil until they start to brown. To cook the peppers, they're already dried, so you want to put them in the flavored oil and cook them for about 30 seconds. You do not want them to turn dark brown. Today I took you on a little trip to Basilicata, a region that's not well known by most people, but the food there is fantastic. And we started with making that candle pasta, you remember the long 18 inch pasta, that we broke into pieces and then combined it with a wonderful eggplant sauce. And another fabulous dish from the same region are these potatoes and peppers. These are sweet peppers and they're called Kruski, which means crunchy, crackly. Two wonderful dishes from Basilicata that I hope you will try. And until I see you Nella Cucina again, I'm Mariana Esposito. Ciao! Now, if you were going to buy these tomatoes, this is what you want to look for. These three symbols that tell you that this is this product. It's a DOP product and that it was canned according to specific rules. It used the right tomatoes. And you can get these in the States, actually. So you just have to look online. But the, the symbol is the most important thing. Grazie, signore. Yeah, yeah, what's up, Michelle? Michelle, Michelle, Michelle.